everything. All right, guys, we are back in free code camp. We are doing the advanced algorithm symmetric difference. So this one was um, pretty hard uh, just because it got a little complicated. Um, first off, uh, because I didn't fully understand what it was that we needed to do. I thought we only needed to count unique numbers, which is why my first couple tests failed. What we actually need to do is make sure that uh, we have a unique number in each set. So if you have multiples in a single set, but they're not in any other sets of data, it will still pass. And we need to take, we need to put our code not to accept two arrays, but as many arrays as we need. Now the way that I did this first was I uh, to get started was we needed to combine all of our arguments from here. And we uh, the way that I did that, or basically get all, all of our arguments into the same thing so we know how much data we're working with. I simply created a variable, and we'll put comments as we go along, that slices all arguments into a single array. That's basically what we're trying to do here. And so, if we were to run our code right now, you'll see we'll get we'll only get one argument. We're getting our first parameter here because this is all that, that's going in, um, which isn't what we need to do. So what we need to do is um, get all the all the arguments, all the parameters, and so we're just going to create an args array and call the um, array dot slice dot call and then the arguments object. This is basically going to slice all the arguments into an array, and you'll see right now. When we return this, let's go ahead and throw this in here. We now get all our arguments, which is an array of, in this case, arrays. Now it could be an array of whatever, but in, in our case, it's an array of two. It could just be a number and a string, but we'd get it all. Now, the next thing we're gonna need to do is you, is there's a couple different ways we can do this. The easiest way is to simply create a function and then reduce that function. Reduce we'll basically run our code and have it do some stuff. Um, or have it run through each iteration of our code, I should say. Now, um, the next thing we want to do is create our callback function. Reduce takes in a callback function. A callback function is a function that's run after you have some data, and then it does some stuff. Um, our function, so we're going to uh, callback. I'll put some comments here. Function to iterate through, through multiple arrays for reduce. And uh, we're just gonna call this function, we're gonna create our function, and we're gonna call this um, simdiff, symmetric difference, right? And so um, we're gonna take in two parameters. So reduce always takes in, or almost always, I should say, takes in two parameters. You have parameter one, and then parameter two, you, you return a value or you do something with that, and then you move on to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and so on and so forth. That's how reduce works, and we need to set up our callback function in the same fu same way. Now, what we wanna do is keep track of all the unique values in our data set, or in our arguments. Uh, and then we're gonna make sure that they, they don't for that, for each array, they don't have any values that match the other array that we're comparing, and so on and so forth. So the first thing that we need to do is just go ahead and create something to store those values in. So this is gonna create an array to store unique values. And I'm gonna show you two different ways to iterate through in for loops and a for each loop. And uh, they both do the same thing, but in uh, just slightly different ways. Um, but just to showcase how each one works, uh, in case you uh, thought you had to do it one way or the other. Um, but uh, so we're gonna create this unique vows. And this is gonna be equal to an empty array. Now this is again, it's gonna be where we store the unique values. Now the first thing that we wanna do is create a for loop. So we're gonna have two for loops here. One to, um, one to compare the values that are in array one with that that's already in unique values to make sure that it doesn't already exist we don't want to add it already and the second for loop is to do the same with um with the unique values too uh, or the second array excuse me um, so we're basically doing the same thing except for once for one array and once for the other so let's start with a simple for loop so we're gonna have if our i is equal to zero and while i is less than r1 dot length because we're checking through the entirety of the first array. So while the i is less than that, i++, plus plus, a simple for loop. And then we have an if statement in here. And what we're comparing in our if statement is saying, look, if the second value, if the second array 
dot index of, meaning if it's not contained, or we haven't actually put an in, index of the current item we're iterating on, our R1i. So in this case, if it was R10, it'd be if one wasn't contained in array index two, and not contained meaning less than zero, and it's not in our unique vowels, so unique vowels dot index of, and then pass in the value that you're checking for, which is gonna be R1i uh, less than zero. So if, if it's not contained within here, go ahead and add that value to our unique value. So if it's not in our second array and it's not in our, our unique vowels array, go ahead and add that. Now, we'll do this like so, unique uh, vowels.push, and we just go push that value. Now that this is one way of writing your for loop. Uh, we're gonna showcase how to do it in a second way. So in our example here, we're doing a simple for loop, and now we're gonna do a for each loop. Now a for each loop works by us say, um, running basically a callback function in it, or a function, and we're basically saying, look, in array two, for each value in the array, do something with that data. In our case, is a function that takes in the item that we're iterating on. And this is basically gonna iterate through everything. It's the equivalent of us doing our for loop uh, because this for loop right here is gonna iterate through the whole array as we have it set up. Same thing here, iterate through each item and then do something with that item. So we just have to write our logic slightly different, but still the same logic. So in this one, we're checking to see if it's in array one. So if array one dot index of, and then in this case, we're pass, passing an item because it's the item in the array is less than zero. And the unique value array dot index of that item is less than zero, meaning it's not in array two and not in unique vowels. We're gonna go ahead and push that value into unique vowels. So unique vowels dot push. Now all this may be um, pretty straightforward at this point. It's a little, a little complicated, but if you could, you kind of, it makes a lot of sense. Now the last thing you have to do here uh, in this callback function is simply return unique vowels at the end. Uh, reduce always requires a return to actually do anything. And so right here, all we need to do is take our original argument, args array, call reduce on this function here, and it's gonna return our unique vowels. So reduce will iterate through our callback function and give us a single return, which in this case will be our unique vowels. And so let's go ahead and do simdiff, pass in our callback function. And where did I mess up? r.index, oh, here we are. So r.index, of course. Hey, it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a coding tutorials 360 video without a uh, syntax mistake. So uh, that was the symmetric difference. Now, um, very complicated uh, for you know. It took me a while. I had to get some help online and look at uh, an example or two to fully understand what I was doing wrong. And I realized I was actually not counting for duplicates. Um, but again, you want to compile all the arguments into a single array of arguments. You then want to write your callback function here that's going to be used in reduce, which is going to uh, be iterated through, and then reduce gets the return value of unique vowels, and then you basically check each value until you're out of arguments that this is correct, and you push the items, and it returns that. Um, so pretty complicated, uh, reduce, uh, there's a lot of help in this array prototype dot reduce, and um, the symmetric difference was uh, something that you sh I sh probably should have paid more attention to. But I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. If you're interested in a coding boot camp, why don't you check them out where they include housing alongside their tuition so you can get up, go, and immerse yourself in the environment. If you want to support me, go over to patreon.com slash codingtutorials360 so we can put out more content. Thanks for watching.